right, welcome Nation Ford Seniors. Today we're going to go through with you a couple things that you're going to need to know as you prepare for four-year or two-year college admissions. So these are your counselors. These are really important people to get to know if you don't already know them this year. If your last name starts with A through C, you're going to be with me, I'm Miss Market. If your last name starts with D through K, you're going to be with Dr. Russell. If your last name starts with L through RH, you're going to be with Mrs. Duncan. And then RI through Z will be with our new counselor, Ms. Shibley. So make sure you're contacting them if you have any questions. We also have a wonderful career development facilitator here at Nation Ford. Her name is Mrs. Bonnie Clefman, and she is also going to be a great resource for you. So make sure you know these faces as you go into senior year. So some things we're going to cover today in this presentation are how to research for colleges, the differences between two-year and four-year colleges, application timelines for your senior year, ways to apply to college, financial aid and scholarship information, as well as the Naviance tutorial. So to get us started, if you're wondering where to start in your college research journey, a great place to start is your Naviance account. We're going to go into how to log in later in the video, but once you get logged in, you're going to want to use their college research tools because they're very vast and have a lot of information. One of my favorite tools they have is called the Supermatch College Search. What you can do on there is plug in all different criteria that you would like in a college, whether it be location, the major you want, sports you'd like them to have, or other attributes of the school. And then once you enter that criteria, it'll give you a list of schools that match those criteria. So it's a really cool tool for you to use. And they also have other things you can research on Naviance as well. College tours are going to look a little bit different this year. Because of COVID-19, many schools are not allowing students on campus for visits. However, they are adapting and have a lot of really awesome virtual tours that you can use on their website. We've started to compile some of them. If you go to the link on our website, you can find a lot of them there. And then also just searching the college's admissions pages. That way you get a little taste of what their campus looks like before you might be able to step, on foot, step foot on campus next year. All right, so the difference between two-year and four-year colleges. Our two-year schools have two different pathways you can go. Either a transfer pathway where you know you're going to end up at a four-year school and you just want to get some of your prerequisites and general courses done, or you can go towards a course of study that's going to get you a trade certification or even an associate's degree. We have a lot of great two-year schools here in this area, York Tech being one of them, and we do partner with them. So we have a lot of information if you're interested in going to York Tech. For admissions to the two-year colleges, it is going to be mostly based on you completing your high school graduation courses. And then we're going to be looking to make sure you completed those successfully. Students with a 3.0 or less GPA may have to take a placement exam just to make sure you're in the right English and math courses your first year at those tech schools. Four-year colleges are going to provide students with the opportunities for hundreds of different majors in order to get your bachelor's degree. So just look at each college to see what major you're interested in and if that school has what you want. Another thing that is unique about four-year colleges is on-campus housing. Most schools are going to require you to live on their campus for at least one year, and then some of them may even allow you to live there all four years if you would like. Four-year colleges also have a lot of different clubs and organizations that you can be a member of and really feel that school community. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is the timeline of your senior year. This is just some markings that you're going to want to make sure you're doing in these months so that you're on track. This month, September, is a great month to be narrowing down your college choice list. We recommend you have anywhere from three to five schools. Some students may want more than that, but three to five is a good number. Uh, maybe one or two that you know 100% sure you meet those qualifications and you're most likely going to get into that school. And then maybe one or two where you're maybe at the lower end of their ranges, but you're really interested in their school and you'd like to apply. So just making sure you have that list of three to five schools is a good start. This month is also a good time to sign up for the SAT or ACT if you'd like to retest or if you have yet to test. A lot of those test dates were canceled in the spring and summer, so if you want to test, make sure you're registering for that as soon as possible. A lot of our colleges are going test optional this year, so you don't necessarily have to have an SAT or ACT score to submit. Just make sure you're checking with each school to make sure what they require. You can request your transcripts to be sent to your colleges starting on September 11th. 
um, of this month. So that's coming up really soon and we're going to go through how you do that a little bit later on. Next up in October, you're going to start to see some early application deadlines come up in October. So make sure you're keeping track of any early applications that you have. Also, the FAFSA is going to open October 1st. That's your free application for federal student aid. If you're looking for any loans or grants, you're going to want to make sure you fill that out. It opens first come, first serve for most colleges. So I recommend opening it October 1st and getting it done as soon as you can. In November, you're going to finish out with those early applications. Some of those are going to have November 1st, maybe November 15th application deadlines. Um, also, make sure you're checking your admissions portals, your common application, so that you know that you're on top of everything that you have due coming in those months. December and January is when we're going to see final deadlines for schools with their regular applications, um, and also the last chance to take the SAT or ACT if you would like to have it counted towards your admissions. February and April are really exciting months. That's when your admissions decisions are going to start coming in to your emails and your mail. So it's a really exciting time. It's also a good time to start looking at scholarships and start filling out those applications. And if you are deferred from a school or they're putting you on a wait list, that's a good time to start sending them letters of intent, letters of recommendation, or mid-year transcripts showing them that you are continually improving and that you really want to attend their school. And then finally, we have May. That's going to be the end of your senior year. That's when you're going to have to decide what school you're going to go to and then make sure that you're finishing applying any scholarships that have outstanding deadlines. So it's just kind of a snapshot of what your senior year may look like. Some of this stuff may change here and there, but this is a good um, model to go off of. All right, so as far as ways to apply to college, there's a couple different methods. Most everything is online at this point. The most direct way to apply to a college is directly on their admissions website. So each school has their own admissions website with portals that you can make an account on and then fill out their application directly there. The benefit of that is that you will receive one-to-one -one communication from that school to you and if they need anything they'll be able to reach out directly to you. Another popular choice is the common application. There are about 900 schools who participate in the common application. So the benefits of that is that you fill out all that generic information once and it gets sent to all those schools. And then you just may have to fill out a couple questions or an essay or two for each individual school. So if you are interested in the Common App, check that out. It is free for students. And then the last option is the Coalition App. So this is similar to the Common App in that there's a lot of schools in there at once. Um, but they also have a lot of great tools for helping you plan, prepare, organize all your materials, and get you ready for your application. So check out these three different methods for applying to college. All right, so next up we're going to look at financial aid and scholarships. Like I mentioned before, the free application for federal student aid opens on October 1st. Most colleges are going to require you submit that no later than October or no later than March 4th so that you have a lot of time to figure out what your financial situation is going to be. For financial aid, you have loans and then you have grants. Loans are things you do have to pay back after you're graduated, but grants are free money. So if you get a grant, definitely take it because you don't have to pay those back. If you are going to fill out the FAFSA, you're going to have to have your parents' assistance because it does require their tax information. They can pull it directly from the IRS's website, but you are going to need them to help you fill that out. Scholarships, on the other hand, are things that you are going to have to apply for in most cases. South Carolina has the HOPE Scholarship, the Life Scholarship, and Palmetto Fellows Scholarship. And those are for students that are going to stay in South Carolina for college and only in-state. If you require or if you have the GPA rank and test scores for these, your counselor will let you know during your IGP. Colleges also have a variety of other scholarships based on athletic ability, intellectual ability, and other things as well. So make sure you're checking out those applications. Some schools will automatically look at you for scholarships during your application period. However, others were going to require extra applications, maybe some essays or letters of recommendation. So just check out the schools you're looking at to see what they have. Nationport also has our own scholarship blog that we keep so that anything that we receive as counselors, we're getting out to you as students. So make sure you're checking that throughout this year because we update it pretty frequently. All right, so the next thing we're going to go into is Naviance training. Some of you are familiar with Naviance. Some of you have maybe never signed in since you took High School 101. Either way, we're going to help you out. 
Um, this is the link to the website. This is also on the Nation for Guidance website, so you can find it there. And this is how you log in. You're going to continue with Clever and use your FMSD mail. Next up, you're going to see a video of me explaining how to request your transcripts, how to request letters of recommendation, and everything else you need to know about Naviance. All right, Nation Ford seniors, this is Naviance. This is the system that you're going to use a lot this year, especially for requesting transcripts, letters of recommendation, college research, and much more. This is the main page that you're going to see when you type in student.naviance.com backslash n Ford HS. This is linked on our website as well. You're going to go to the student backpack. You're going to click continue with Clever. This is our safest way to log in. You're going to type in our school, Nation Ford, and then you're going to log in with your Google account. So it's going to bring up your options here. You're going to want to make sure you sign in under your name. Once you get there, this is what it's going to look like. So this is your main page. I'm going to go through a couple of our most important things, but there's a lot to look on here. So spend some time just looking over it and seeing what you might want to use it for. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is show you how to request a transcript and add colleges to your list. So on this main page, you see where it says My Favorites. You're going to go to Colleges I'm Applying To. I have went ahead and added some here so you would see what it looks like. So when you're ready to add a school, you're going to come over to this pink plus sign, and then you're going to type in the name of a school. So I'm going to look up Appalachian State University. So you're going to click on that. There's going to be an option for the application type, whether it be regular decision or transfer or priority. So you're just going to click whichever one best fits you. No worries if you get it wrong. We're going to just fulfill your request as soon as you put it in either way. As far as the application type, you're going to either say I'm applying directly to that school if you're applying on their website, or you're going to click via Common App if you are using the Common App. So for this instance, I'm just going to click direct to the institution. If you've submitted your application, you'll check that box. If you haven't yet, then you can leave it unchecked. You have two choices now. You can either just add the school or you can add and request transcript. So we're going to add and request transcript. This is your initial transcript. Later in the year, you'll be able to request a mid-year transcript in February and a final transcript in June. You're going to click Request and Finish, and then it is in. You'll be able to see here that it says your request has been submitted, and it is pending. And once it's been sent, you'll see the date it was sent there. And then the Common App was slashed out because we selected Direct to the Institution. If we had selected Common App, we would need to match our Common App. This is very important. If you select Common App, but then do not match your Common App to your Naviance account, we will not be able to send your transcript. So you have to click Match Accounts, and then enter your Common App email address, so the email that you use to create Common App, and your date of birth, and click Match Accounts. If you come up with an error, it could be because you didn't sign the FERPA waiver on the Common App. So make sure you have that signed so that we can send your transcripts directly to the Common App. So once we have that, you should be in here. Now if you would have just added the school and you wanted to request the transcript later, there's multiple ways you can do that. But the easiest way is to go to Request Transcripts, click Initial, pull down your little arrow, and then all your schools are going to show up there. So if you just want to send it to one school, just click that one. If you want to send it to multiple, you can click as many as you'd like, click Done, make sure that looks good, and then Request. So then those are all requested now. And you can keep track of those um, under that Office Materials tab. So that is our most important thing that we know how to do when we're looking at transcripts. Another thing that you're going to want to use this for is potentially some recommendations. So if you go to Colleges and then Colleges Home, and you're going to scroll down, you're going to see on the left here, Letters of Recommendation. Click on that. And then you can add a request here. It is important that you've already talked to the teacher that you're going to write, have, write this recommendation because we don't want them to not know that it's in Naviance. So we want to make sure you've spoken to them and that they have agreed to give you that rec letter of recommendation. So if I want to get Mr. Burns as my letter of recommendation, I'm going to put him there. Then you can either click all and 
all current and future colleges that I am applying to, or just specific schools if they only require a few. You can see their required ones here and how many they will allow you to send. Some schools have a maximum and they won't allow more than what they say. So you can click the schools you want it to send to. It's nice to put a little note in there to remind them um, about all your great qualities and things that you would hope that they would highlight in your recommendation and then you would submit your request. And then you can see the status on there as well. So just so you know how to get to that again, we're gonna go back to colleges and it was down under applying to colleges. So those are two really important things that you know how to do. One more thing that I'd like to show you is the college match. We talked about this in our video earlier. The college match is really, really cool. You can put in all kinds of different things that you would want in a school, and then it will help you find what school you want. So you're going to just go to super match, select criteria to start, and then fill in whatever you want, whether it be just schools in South Carolina, or if you want schools in Alaska, they'll give you anything that you are looking for. You can put in academics. If you want to get a certain degree, you know for sure you want to be an accountant. Go ahead and click accounting and finance and it'll filter out schools that don't offer that. And you can just go forward and add as many things as you want. And then it's going to start showing you schools that meet those criteria. Things that are 100% fit, 75% fit, um, and other options as well. If you want to look into that school, you just simply click the name of the school and then it's gonna come up with all this data and information that is important for you to know, as well as a link to their website. So those are the most important things. There's, again, a lot of different things you can do on here. They have some great career research as well as career inventories you can take. If you have no idea what career you're interested in, this is a great place to get started. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to your, to your counselor and contact them with anything that you need. Thanks. All right, guys, so that's all we have for our two and four year college video. Thank you for watching this. If you have any questions, please make sure to contact your counselor. We're happy to answer your questions. As soon as you send them, we'll get you an answer within 24 to 48 hours. Our emails are listed here as well as on our website. So thanks for watching.